Hello and welcome back to the June 3 workshop series where we're going to be taking a deep dive into the features and workings of June 3. And in this episode we're going to recreate an authentic ACID sound. I'm going to be using the ACID low pass that's built into June 3 as well as the arpeggiator and a few effects and then I'll show you an effects chain as well in context of a mix. And from here you'll be able to create your own ACIDs in June 3. Alright let's start by looking at the ACID itself in context. <laughs> So we've got a good idea of how that sounds with the mod wheel opening with the effects chain and on its own. So let's get into the nitty gritty and recreate this. So I've got a second duplicated track here and it's just an initialized patch with zero effects on the audio inserts there. And we're going to start with the arpeggio. So we're going to turn on arp number one and jump into the arp because this is like the core of the sound design. This is what gives you the flavor. And then when you're doing the actual sound design, you can get a better idea of how it's meant to sound. So starting here, we're going to have a 16 step sequence. So I'm going to bring that up to 16. It's going to be running at a rate of one over 16. And then we're going to adjust the length and slide once we've got the rest set up. So the first page is going to look like this, but we're going to have three and six having tied notes. And then the next eight steps on here are 12 and 14. So we should have something like this. Perfect. So I'm going to set the polyphony over here to mono. So we've got just the singular note and we're going to look at adding the notation in. So we're not actually going to change notes with MIDI. We're going to do it here in the arpeggiator. So we're going to use 11 and 12, 14 and 15 for our note changes. So 11 is going to go up to plus 12. So that's one octave higher. And then we're going to go plus 10. 14 is going to be plus 15. And then step 15 is going to be back to plus 12. So then we get this. So we're making some progress there, but we need to change the length and slide here. So I'm just going to open the length a little bit. And then I'm going to increase the slide. So 108 milliseconds and a plus 22 length sounds quite nice there for this sound design. Feel free to change that and make it your own. I'm finally just going to change the mode here to playback just to make sure those tied notes sound as they should. So if you sit that on to say dynamic, for example, it has a different playback mode. So just to make sure it works as intended, it should be on playback. And with that done, we have the arpeggio sorted so we can start focusing on the sound design. And let's start with oscillator one. I'm going to bring the semitones down to minus 12. So it's one octave below. I want to do this in the sound design rather than just lowering the MIDI. And we're going to leave everything else as it is. You can choose to use a wavetable. For example, we can use the vintage saw, which then gives you an option between a softer and a little bit of a harsher one. But the virtual analog saw has just got a lot more bite and crunch. So depending on what you want in, you can choose different ones. And then we look at the bulk of the sound design, which is in filter one. And we're going to scroll down to the transistor ladder. I'm going to choose acid low pass, and I'm going to bring the cutoff down to around 50% and just turn the resonance up to maximum. And you can hear it would starting to delve into that territory. So I'm going to bring up the envelope amount. So plus 15 is working fine, but we do need to make some changes to the envelopes. So I'm going to bring the attack and sustain down on the filter envelope as it is by default. And I'm going to bring up the decay a little bit. And just move the release up a smidge just so we stop any artifacting. We're going to do the same with the amp envelope. We're going to have zero sustain, zero attack, but we're going to have a longer decay because you're going to hear it's going to sound quite plucky now. So 
So decay is a lot higher to stop the pluckiness and the release is just to stop any clicks and pops that can occur from it shutting down really quickly. And that is starting to sound more authentic. We're going to add on a filter effect as well, which is some light distortion. We're just going to add a little bit in there so it just gives it a little bit of grittiness. Probably somewhere around there, 17 sounds quite nice. And with that done, I'm going to set up the mod wheel and then we can jump into the effects and that is the sound design complete. So jumping into mod matrix, I'm going to select my source as the mod wheel, which is here, and I'm going to attach that to the cutoff. And just as a little tip for the mod wheel when you're assigning this, if you open the mod wheel, you can just go to the keyboard and open it there. Adjust the amount so you can hear where the filter opens to, and then you've set your mod wheel as quick as possible without any hindrance. But if I set this now and just say I want it to be maybe at plus 27 and open it and realize it's a bit too high, I can just roll it back. It's just quicker to have it already open, put it to the place where you want it to be, and then you can close your mod wheel and you've got a perfect automation with your mod wheel. So I'm just going to jump into the track, make sure there's no modulation on there. And there is. The mod wheel was being automated, so that's all good and well. Open the mod wheel. So plus 20 is going to be fine. So now when I close the mod wheel, we've got the original sound design that we just did. But we've got full control with the mod wheel. And with that done, we can jump into the effects bus and um, we're going to use an EQ at the beginning, some distortion, another EQ, and then we're going to use some delay on there. So in that sequence, we're going to start with the first EQ and I'm going to set the low shelf here. I'm just going to bring it into around 50 hertz. Just do it by ear. I'm just trying to lower how much of that low end is coming through because that's going to affect how the distortion works and it's going to sound a lot better when you've removed a lot of the lower frequencies out. If you want more in, you can just bring that up a little bit, but for this particular sound design and track, this sounds a lot better and cleaner. But to stop that slope going down at an angle, I'm going to use B1 here, bring it down to around the 20 hertz mark, and then I'm just going to boost there and you can see it just flattens it off instead of it going continuously down so we get a bit of a cleaner cut there. So then on distortion, I'm going to choose crunch and this is going to give it a really nice vibe to it. So I'm going to turn it off, start it. So if you're looking for that really crunchy, really hard hitting 303 sound, that is going to be one of your answers. Otherwise, don't bother with the distortion or have it on a very low dry wet so you still get some of that raw sound coming through. And then jumping into EQ2, this is where we're going to add some of the mids back in. We're going to get it really popping hard and just remove some of the lows that the distortion has added. So I'm going to drop this down just a smidge. About minus 2 dB is fine there just to clean up the lows again. And where the brightness is going to come through is going to use the high shelf and then we're going to use B2 or B1, doesn't matter which one, just to bring in some mids and get some power going. So I'm going to bring this down a bit lower. Just to bring in a bit of brightness in there. And then B2, I'm going to bring the frequency up a little bit and I'm going to give it a high boost, about 10 dB to start with, so we can hear exactly what it's doing and then we can dial it back to taste. So you can hear the croaky bit is coming through around that sort of 3.8 kilohertz mark. So that's fine. I'm just going to dial that back now. And that adds tons of power into that sound design. So let's just listen to how that sounds before and after. It sounds much better and it just has a lot more power, especially with no effects chain on at all. June 3 is sounding absolutely wonderful with this now. 
So finally, delay, let's just put on some ping pong. I'm gonna leave it on sync mode, one over eight, and I'm just gonna cut some of them lows out and some of the highs. Just to note, the next episode, we're going to take a look at adding accents using a few different methods within Juden 3 so we can further make that more authentic. And just to quickly demonstrate what I mean by accents, I've added the next track in that's going to be for the next video, and I'll just show you how the accents sound when we open the mod wheel. <laughs> So you can hear with that, we're not just opening the filter, we're opening the filter with accents. So you can hear that filter kind of briefly opens up a little bit more on certain notes. And obviously that adds an extra layer of authenticity to the sound design, especially with acids. And with that said, if you have any questions about what you've seen in today's video, please ask away down in the comments. And I thank you for watching the video and I'll see you all in the next one.